Okay, I'm really trying to work out if EMF is bad for you or not. Okay, it's so confusing. There's so many studies out there. The gov.uk and cancer.org both say, nope, we don't think it's bad. You know, there's hundreds of pages of studies on their website to back up their claims, and they do not think there should be a publicly defined limit for EMF radiation. So they don't think it's bad. On the other hand, the World Health Organization and the FCC, they both do say, yeah, we think that EMF is dangerous. Uh, the FCC said for years they've known that radio frequency radiation is dangerous. And um, the World Health Organization have said, we think a public limit should be defined uh, for EMF radiation. So firstly, what is radi EMF radiation? We need to kind of understand what it is. So you've got this thing called a radio frequency spectrum. Now, everything on here travels as a wave, right? Unless you're a quantum physicist, it could be a wave or a particle, it's called wave particle duality, but it's, let's think of it as, as a, for now, as a wave. So we, the reason I put my hands here is you've got the lower end of the spectrum and the higher end of the spectrum. So radio frequency. So at the lower end, you've got radio waves and frequency, you know, I frequent the library a lot. No, I don't. Um, but that's frequency is just the amount of time something happens. So at the bottom, we've got radio frequency. If I turn my radio to say KISS 100, it's looking for frequency at 100 uh, megahertz, which means it's looking for a wave that's traveling up and that's oscillating up and down at 100 million times a second. At the higher end, we've got gamma rays. Now, we know gamma rays are bad for the body because they're used for cancer patients, uh, for cancer treatment um, in radiotherapy, and they attack the cells. Now, that's called ionizing radiation at the high end. This is called non-ionizing radiation. And EMF is in the non-ionizing radiation band. If we come down a bit at the top, a bit less dangerous, we've got x-rays. You know, if you've been to the dentist and had an x-ray, they leave the room because, you know, x-rays are dangerous. Here you've got microwaves and uh, we've all got microwaves in our home. Hopefully they're not too dangerous unless they leak. So sort of around here, a bit lower, but in the middle, you've got UV light, which can be dangerous if you get sunburnt, and you've got um, visible light. So all of this travels as a wave. It's all the same type of wave, but the higher up the spectrum you go, the more up, you know, the higher the frequency is, right? So around here in the middle and sort of a bit more to the lower end, you've got Wi-Fi, okay? Now, I'll do another video for phones and wireless headsets, but, but Wi-Fi on your Wi-Fi router runs at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, right? That's 2.4 or 5 billion, not million, billion oscillations a second when the waveform comes down to you know to connect right so all of this gives off an electromagnetic um radiation right radiation is just energy through space doesn't have to always be bad it so we just want to ascertain if it is bad so what do the studies say right i have looked at so many studies on the national institute of health uh, that say it's unhealthy for uh, you know so let's 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 give some examples right so there's two ways you can measure um, EMF radiation. One is the frequency I mentioned. The other one is the power density. And the World Health Organization actually say, look, we believe that you shouldn't have in public places more than 0.1 watts per meter squared of radiation. That means in a meter squared, there would be no more than 0.1 watts. So this is a um, EMF radiation detector. So if I switch it on. Nothing. <sighs> Ah, my phone's on airplane mode, so I have to be very careful here. Okay, so we're just below the threshold they say. That's a 100,000 micro watts per meter squared. So that's just sort of under 0.1 watts per meter squared. So understand why gov.uk and cancer.org say, you know, it's not bad for you. But... These studies, more and more and more of them show that the Wi-Fi at the power it gives off, which is, you know, 0.1 watts, let's say, and at that frequency, 2.45 gigahertz, there's more and more studies to show, mainly in mice, I've got to say, that there's an impact on cells. So the studies I read, the biggest one was on Lancet, which is a very credible publication. There were 94 peer-reviewed studies into cells and the damage from EMF radiation, and there was an 82% response rate. That meant 82% of all of those 94 studies showed an impact on cells from EMF radiation. The same type of studies uh, were done. One actually was funded by the WHO, which was the NTP, the National Toxicology Programme, and that was a $30 million study over 10 years. 
And that showed an increased growth of cancers and tumors in the heart and in the brain. So, you know, that topped off with every study I read on the NIH, maybe like, I don't know, seven, 800 pages of, of, of studies I read. And again, overwhelming evidence, peer reviewed um, cellular studies to show that there's an impact. Um, a lot of DNA breakdown, a lot of carcinogenic issues in cells, a lot of tumor growths, you know, dark neurons, which are the precursor to dementia, horrible, horrible things. So from my point of view, when I've read all of this, I've been like, ah, OK. Now, why is everyone so worried at the moment about this more than, you know, 10 years ago? Because I remember 10 years ago, actually 25 years ago, I got my first phone and everybody said, yep, it's not unhealthy. And I remember saying, you know, are you sure having this thing plugged by my head all day, every day is, is not unhealthy? And everybody said no. But it always kind of reverberated around my head, the whole smoking thing, you know, like our grandparents smoked and they were told smoking wasn't unhealthy. And now, you know, so the reason why now people are getting so kind of, let's say confused, because I've been confused about this, is that it's not just one mobile phone, one Wi-Fi router, one iPad. It's all of this. You know, there's now more wireless um, devices than there are people on the planet. Uh, Elon Musk, he flew Starlink into orbited, not flew. He's um, now got and putting up 20,000 satellites into space to blanket the planet to give, you know, more Wi-Fi internet coverage. We've got 4G, 5G cell towers going up everywhere. So this is called EMF density. So it's not just one EMF radiation wave coming in. You know, there's billions, probably like a lot, lot more. Of, of so it's called emf density and there's a huge amount of it and that's why everybody's kind of getting worried about this now and why more and more tests are being done which is great so i'm erring on the side of caution because i do feel with all of this emf radiation that and all of the studies i've read i'm kind of thinking you know this probably isn't healthy is my thought okay so there's some good news what can you do about it you can easily stop all the emf radiation from hitting you for the most of the time. So this is what I would do. Turn off your Wi-Fi router when you go to bed. Even better, if you've got someone who's a little bit techie, then switch off Wi-Fi on the router, and just cable everything in. But if you haven't got the time to do that, switch off Wi-Fi when you go to bed. When you do go to bed, if you don't want to turn off your phone, put it on airplane mode, turn off Wi-Fi, turn off Bluetooth, because it's kind of sneaky how you can put your plane on airplane mode, but keep Wi-Fi on. And what I've noticed is, and every phone I've checked, well, all the Galaxies, all the iPhones, I check the radiation, and it goes to zero. So make sure your phone is on airplane mode, Wi-Fi is off, Bluetooth is off. When you turn the phone back on, as you saw, the EMF radiation jumps. So hold the phone away from you for the first 30 seconds or so. Um, lads, I've read quite a few studies that show that EMF radiation reduces sperm count, right? So it's all about the proximity of these devices. So if it's in your pocket all day, every day, this is not ideal, lads. So I would, remove your phone from your pockets for long periods of time. Do you know you go out on a Friday night and you kind of forget and it's there for six, 12, 24 hours, however long it's there for. I would just say, you know, keep it at a distance for as long as possible because that distance makes a huge amount of difference to the amount of EMF radiation you're susceptible to. So those simple changes will protect you if EMF is dangerous. If it's not dangerous, you haven't lost anything. So that's my advice.